Well, we've uh, seen Elon Musk, uh, Steve Wozniak, other tech giants say we got to pump the brakes on AI. They're concerned about this technology and how it's going to be used. And um, that there's a lot of responsibility that has to fall on these companies. Um, the other issue that we've talked a little bit about this is what happens with AI when it's applied, when kids can have easy access to it, what does that do to the education process? Will they actually be learning things? Will they just be turning in, you know, work that is created by, by AI? Right. You, who's who's going to write an essay anyway? Well, and also, it, it short circuits the thinking process. Right. But then there's a dilemma. You also want young people to understand new technology, right? Because that's the future. Right. So it's complicated. So how do you balance this? Right. Well, let's talk to someone uh, who is... I, I, quite skilled in balancing all this. She is a tech entrepreneur and a futurist. Uh, Sinead Bovell, uh, welcome to TMZ Live. Hey, Sinead. Hey, thanks for having me. We really appreciate having you on. Uh, look, I am an old dog, and, I, and the reason I'm really concerned about this is what I just said to Charles, which is that when AI can create essays um, can give you answers, it short circuits the thinking process. And I think that- It's taking, I think that's we're already so, getting that a little bit with just with the internet. Right. This is taking it, it to the next level. It feels very dangerous to me to have unthinking adults um, as a result of this. That's my personal opinion. What say you? Right. So I would say if all things stay the same and we don't update our education systems, uh, then our current curricula are largely inadequate. But I like to the example to the calculator, right? So when the calculator came out, uh, it didn't mean that thinking goes away or that math went away. It meant we had to test for that knowledge in a new way. And in fact, math got harder. We all had to deal with calculus and all sorts of stuff because of the invention of the calculator. But the same has to be true in a world with artificial intelligence. If kids can turn to ChatGPT or another AI system to generate an essay, we have to test for that knowledge in new ways. Uh, and some teachers are looking into this, having students craft the prompt uh, for an AI system uh, or having students critique what AI has written. And you know, was that argument good enough? Where could they have improved? So I think trying to run away from AI when I think it was Charles, you mentioned uh, that the future is going to include tools like ChatGPT and AI systems. And we need to make sure students are educated for the future, for the world of tomorrow and the economy of tomorrow. And that means incorporating it. The problem I see, Sinead, the, the difference is, yes, you want them to understand how it works and be able to utilize it in the future. But while they're learning, it seems, as Harvey said, like counterintuitive to them using it during the actual education process. I, and I understand that there are applications, maybe even that teachers could use AI to, to their benefit, but I, I don't see a benefit for students using it. I do. So I think, um, again, if we're thinking of AI just writing the essay, then that's not really helpful. Um, but what about students writing things in class where they might not get access to, to an AI system? Or we actually end up raising the bar for writing because we have these tools. Again, the same way the calculator forced us to raise the bar on the type of math problems we brought. This is going to take us going back to the drawing board and redesigning our curricula uh, in a world where we have these systems to lean on. Because at the end of the day, if we can co-create a news article, an essay with AI, that's what the future is going to consist of. It's no longer necessary, necessary uh, to potentially just write something all on your own. And it doesn't mean we lose those thinking skills. Uh, it means we get to raise the bar on what we require from students hmm. uh, and can really dive down into critical thinking. So uh, help me out here. And I'm not trying to challenge just for the sake of, but it sounds like what you're saying is that the new world order is going to be that people can create these essays and that's kind of the baseline and from that they can look at what they've done learn from what they did but the actual crafting of it becomes almost mechanical is that right not necessarily so these systems are also very middle of the road you're not going to use this system and be the best in the class if everybody's using them this is the new average uh, so maybe chat gpt or an ai system like it being the starting prompt for you to get ideas to build the framework of your essay, but still human critical thinking far surpasses uh, these AI systems. They just are word prediction machines. Uh, and now that we have these tools, we can really focus on, on things like critical thinking. Uh, and maybe you do do the first draft with uh, an AI system, and then you come into class and you have to upgrade that essay yourself. Oh. And that's even more challenging. 
here's a B essay written by AI. Bring it to an A. That's interesting. I wouldn't yeah. even know where to start. That's actually really interesting. So I got to ask. I, I got to ask you about this because you're a futurist, and. I have been fascinated by something for years now um, that, you know, Elon Musk is working on this neural link that could be implanted in the brain. And initially, the idea is you can actually cure people, you know, who have a paraplegic and you can do all amazing things. Epilepsy, which is just an incredible, uh, an incredible advancement if he, if he can do it. I talked to him once about this and ultimately... I think he believes that could be used almost like you could implant Google in your brain. If that's the case, where eventually what's you can What's the brain get, even there for? What's the brain even, it almost It's just a receiver. It's that's, like, that's right. I mean, do like you- an amplifier. Could that be our future where we end up knowing everything, but not necessarily thinking about anything? In many ways, we have already outsourced a lot of aspects of our thinking to AI, whether that's Google Maps, I can't get down the road without consulting Google, um, all sorts of things, our, our email flagging any sort of fraud detection uh, in our banking system. So we already outsource a lot to AI. Uh, so it's not too different that the that the chip is just getting closer to our bodies uh, but also remember we'll be at a very different part in our evolution as well uh, and the more we've outsourced to ai it doesn't mean that we actually lose that knowledge uh, the fact that most of us don't really know how to read a map isn't necessarily harmful to us we've now replaced that space uh, with other types of skills and we're now conquering and doing other sorts of kind of higher value tasks hmm. You know what? What you just said, I, I really hadn't considered. I really that hadn't you, thought of it that way. But you're right. It kind of it. it, it, it I don't, changed. I don't, I don't there know are different what, things you have to learn. Yeah, I you don't know whether the word is elevating. Yeah. Now you don't have to read a Thomas guide. You have to a, you have to figure out how to. That's a really good example to explain your All right, point. So we're not wow. going to be upset that kids are going to have it much easier in school than we did. That was that's not that was the point. Well, <laughs> that's that's what I think. That was really fascinating hearing the way you just described that. Um, Thank you so much for your time. This was really interesting. Thank you for having me. It was great to be here. Really right. interesting. Thanks so much. That, yeah, that definitely makes you go. Yeah, that 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 yeah. drove it home.